Hello guys, Packin here. And today I'm gonna be installing this Xeon processor. It's a Xeon X5470. It is the only, um, used to be the top of line quad core Xeon um, that has a 100, um, 1,333 megahertz of front side bust with 3.33 gigahertz with a 12 megabytes of L2 cache. Now, this, before you install this CPU, um, let's go and direct our attention to the T300. Let me focus that a little bit. There you go. It's a PowerEdge T300. Now, before I install this thing, what you gotta do is that you're gonna have to make sure you update the BIOS. Now, what I have on here, I'm gonna turn it on. And yes, my workbench is the floor. And the floor is perfectly fine. I don't have a table. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. And it's gonna get really loud with a jet engine. It will take a while to be shown on screen. we have it now I've already updated the BIOS you want the BIOS revision 1.5.2 1 um, that way it would accept the X54 the X5470 now if I if I never update the BIOS what's gonna happen is that it would no law it would not post it would not recognize the newest uh, chip. Uh, what it has right now is, I believe it's a PC2 5300F ECC RAM with one 1.86 gigahertz dual core. Now it's not a it's not a very high processor, so it came in stock as just a dual core. So I'm going to beef this thing up with a quad core CPU so when I return I'm gonna be showing you what's gonna happen on the screen I'm just gonna go and uh, take this apart while I let this camera stay in, the, in a box to show you how I'm able to take this all apart make sure I use some kind of um, they test gloves so that it doesn't cause any kind of electrical interference. I'm just gonna lift this up, lift this tab up, lift this down. Just make sure the wire is not in the way. Gently just pull it out, like so. All right. Now I'm gonna take out this CPU. Now I don't want to do it at at this angle because I'm afraid that I might force the thing to drop or maybe I just can't take it out from the underneath. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this thing upside down, I mean leave it on the side. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. I have good lighting. All right, I'm gonna lift these two tabs. All right, I'm gonna try with doing it with one hand. For all you viewers out there. Okay.
All right, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna take it with two hands. All right. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so what I did is that I gently just push it down and and basically just push it the this um, this lever down so you can release the tension and push and pull it up like so. Now, now because when you take out the pressure from this angle, you want to like hold it and then you want it to pull it on the other side. That way this heat sink would not, would not curve because the pressure is on one side. It's gonna, it's gonna lift up on one side which might have damaged the CPU. So make sure you gently push, push this down while you lift this up while on the same hand on your right hand you pull this outwards from this lever outwards to release it so we have done that carefully just take it out and there you go all right looks like it's uh it's like a thermal paste compound let me see that Now, what's really disappointing about this uh, this heatsink is that it's not it's not entirely copper unless the copper is actually inside. I mean, I see a copper on the tips, which may lead me to believe that there might be copper somewhere on the outside. But I would rather prefer having to see copper on the actual base. Well, not that much dust, anyway. Um, Let's proceed. And this is the actual CPU. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna clean this up with some um, alcohol solution uh, before I lift this up. Because if I lift this up and, and, and I start cleaning it, I might contaminate the inside of the pins that's housing, that's holding the CPU. So what you gotta do is, because the CPU is already in place, Let's just clean this up first with an alcohol pad and, and then after that you gently just lift this, this thing up, put a new, new processor in and then you thermal grease it and it should be working fine with the new X5470 quad core Xeon. Alright, right back. Hey guys, I'm back. I've installed like a temporary light. So you guys can see that I've installed the X5470. I took out the original chip. So what I'm going to do now is put the lid on and close it. Now as you can see, I've covered the whole surface with Arctic Silver. So when I'm lining it up, make sure it doesn't touch the thermal grease. Now it's good to have a lot, but at the same time, I put very tiny amount so I can spread it with a card. A plastic card, plastic squeegee would be fine. Make sure you spread it evenly, not too much. Um, that way it doesn't drip all over the components. This is just a very good amount. Take a look. This is what I prefer. A nice, good, even coated surface. Okay, I'll install the heat sink and now I'm gonna turn this thing on and I'll be back. All right, as a continuation, I've already um, installed the X5470 uh, quad core 333 gigahertz. I replaced the original stock CPU, which was a dual core. If I can show you. Okay, 
and you can see it. This is the original dual core. There you go. E6305. It's a Core 2 Duo. It uses a 1.86 gigahertz, 2 megabytes Veldu cache. I replaced it. The socket it uses is a LGA 771. Um, I'm gonna start this thing up. All right. Here goes nothing. Forgot to plug this thing in. I use a compressor to take out all the dust. I should plug this in. All right. Now, let's put this thing on. See if it posts. It should post because beforehand I've updated the BIOS. With a with a Windows 7 op, Windows 7 operating system, and from then on, I put in the driver in. Hopefully, see the result. There you have it. Again, this is the BIOS revision 1.5.2. It has posted successfully. It accepted the last of the best CPU. That's the highest, the highest CPU you can upgrade. Let me let this thing to load. There. One 3.33 gigahertz quad core plus 3.33 megahertz. It also has 24 gigabytes of RAM, the highest um, capacity of RAM you can get for this uh, server. This PowerEdge T300. All right, guys, this is the BIOS. I forgot to show this to you. I just want to show you the information that I've upgraded. Um, as you can see, it is confirmed. The X5470 works. It reads it. It accepts it. Let's see, 470. Take it out. Memory information. Here it is. It's a ECC RAM DDR2, 24 gigabytes. It uses an onboard video card memory which I haven't even upgraded the video card yet. But uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. Peace.